Yes. It's a celebration. Hey. <laughs> He's already gonna be one of my favorite characters in this. Enjoying my reactions, but you don't feel like waiting a week for the next upload? That's cool, cause I got you covered. Chances are, by the time you watch this show on YouTube, I'll already have the full seasons available over on Patreon in their complete unedited glory. All you gotta do is become a tier 2 patron. And if you just so happen to be a viewer who wants to request things from me, such as movies and shows, then you can take your loyalty even further by becoming a tier 3 patron. The ball is in your court, and I'm completely at your service. So take advantage of these opportunities now. Yo, what's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG, aka the Random Black Gamer, here with me, myself, and I on the ones and twos, and this is Way and City Reactions, the place where I react to everything I ain't never seen. And if you're read by the title, then you already know what time it is. It's time to take up those swords, raise them high for some more Osama Sentai King Oger reaction. Now guys, last week's episodes really put King Rackless in a different light. I usually can't stand this guy. I think he's a pompous ass, and I still stand by that to some extent. But after they revealed why he was acting that way, it's somewhat understandable, you know? Like, um, this guy had to do what he had to do, you know? Um, unfortunately, the bills ain't paying themselves, and um, Doug Dead, he has a tight hold over Shu Gotham, and he basically had to beat under this man's thumb. And you know what this reminded me of? This was very reminiscent of the relationship that Vegeta had with Frieza, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball Z, because we already know how it was. Frieza killed Vegeta's daddy and the rest of his people, with the exception of Goku and Nappa, and I think somebody else, uh, Raditz, who we always forget. And, you know, he had to kind of work his way up, you know, he had to act like he was in direct servitude with Frieza, but he was actually plotting to become a Super Saiyan so he could overthrow the evil, cool, blooded master himself. Uh, that's kind of the same case with this right here with Rackless and Doug Dead, man. Like, Doug Dead, he is a very pretentious asshole that likes to, you know, manipulate and warp things for his own amusement, and we see that. So, uh, it's nice to see that Rackless actually turned over a new leaf, even though he was really good. He just had to be a despicable person in order to obtain what he wanted to obtain. Um... In order to completely redeem himself, he's been tasked with working with the King Ogier and revealing more secrets about their abilities, which something that he revealed is that the uh, the Six Kings Proof ability is something that they could use to get rid of these Galacta Insects, but there is a catch-22 to this whole situation. Um, and he warned Yama of this. Uh, Yama was the first to tap into his ability, uh, which makes perfect sense because he is the king of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, after doing this, you know, he developed these lightning abilities, but it seems like he's also developed a swelled up hubris and he almost levels Shu got him until uh, <laughs> Gitter had to give him that five finger discount. So, uh, yeah, it was nice to see those things. And I guess we're going to be seeing a reoccurring pattern where each um, Oger develops this King's truth or King's, uh, you know, proof ability and we're gonna see how they actually overcome that so yeah man i can't wait to see how they're gonna do uh so far we've uh, gotten rid of two monsters if i'm not mistaken and i think monogam we got rid of him too so i guess that makes three uh we got rid of uh hillabill and we've gotten rid of that other uh monster if i'm not mistaken his name was goma or something like that so yeah uh, we almost got rid of uh, Doug Dead too, uh, but apparently he was hiding up in the Monogam monster, you know, so he essentially rebirthed himself. So we got to figure out a way to get rid of him completely the next time we see him. But anyways, I'm not going to hold you guys. We're going to go ahead and jump into this next episode, which is episode 45 titled Heirs to the King. Here we go. I got your chain, my nigga. Here you go. I had it appraised and all. The beam of light. <laughs> Says the guy that's in a Sentai property that actually caters to kids. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so you're a simp. <laughs> We've tried that, sir. Bruh. That sounds like a good plan. Sure we can do it, though? Oh, wow. Does this poor girl ever get a break? Damn. She got a life, too. Mm. Here we go. Trial error. Oh, so he has fire. I have made fire. All right, don't burn yourself up, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Somebody give me an extinguisher. Let me guess you have ice. Of course. Okay, Bobby Drake. Damn. Miss Frostbite. Damn, he got a fro? This is hilarious. <laughs> Right, hey, like can't fire and wipe out all of his crops? Why did she have to join him? <laughs> he looks so funny. Like a gangster Oompa Loompa. What preparations would those be? What is that? Damn, somebody shooting that special bean cannons? I love it. He loves her. I think he really does love her. What are you doing? Wow. Kill you, motherfuckers. <laughs> I just love how we appear in the same location every episode. It's the only practical location we have. <laughs> mm. Bitch! Really? Did he shrink? Wow! Damn! Right, so I see we have a pest on our hands. He's gonna be very hard to kill. Bruh. I mean, is that possible, though? Oh, no! What did he just do to y'all? Hey. What are we doing? Okay, you're clumsy now. <laughs> Mama! <laughs> yeah, now they are actually babies at heart. Boy, this sucks. Look at this nigga. Is this really how he used to be? <laughs> Sentai babies. Really? Let's see what this asshole wants. Put him on speed dial. Yeah. What's that gonna do? Oh wow. Finish! Pfft. 
Tumbo, Tumbo. Bro, can you please stop? <laughs> Damn. Oh my god, what's gotten into her? Oh no. So he can use his galactic insect powers? Oh shit. Yeah, this could prove to be very dangerous if they don't do something about it. Nice. Hey, you have to treat them like babies, man. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> Damn. You say that, but you was ready to give it all up earlier. Mm. So these are essentially just old personality traits of each character. So they're, it's probably amplified too. Hey, she left around these S and M cuffs right here. No wonder. Damn. Ain't that some shit? I really wish they could have been sisters or siblings. I'm sorry. Ain't it good though? That looks so delicious. Bro, I should be arresting your ass. Goddamn stowaway. Boy, that's got to be something. As a horrible monster myself, I think I can do that for you. Alright. Stay here if you want. <laughs> Wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you done lost your goddamn mind. <laughs> Slash, bitch. The fuck you doing in my hood? Uh, uh. Nice. Here we go. Ooh, boy, he on fire with it. 
Not interested at all. Combine y'all powers. So are you. Exactly. Mm. Slash. Mm. Yeah. I avoid these blasts like I avoid these thirsty bitches in my DMs. Mm. I love this team up. Mm. Let the fires incinerate your soul. Let them burn bright. That's cool. Okay, he's using that to actually heat her up, keep her from freezing. That's awesome. Yeah, it seems like both of their powers work well with each other. They work perfectly in tandem. She keeps him from getting too hot and he keeps her from getting too cold. I know you can handle it. Damn right she can. <laughs> oh shucks. Be a big girl. There you go. Don't worry about me. I got this. We reunite. We we uniting the kingdoms right now. Very good. All right, guys, so that right there was episode 45 titled Heirs to the King. Yeah, um, this is a very interesting episode. Once again, man, the Galactic Insects, they waste so much time when they could have actually got the W, but you know how they, they are. They can't resist actually causing this chaos just for the sake of entertainment. Um, yeah, it's like the resolves of these characters, like it brought back all the earlier ambitions that they had. And sometimes it was at a negative effect, you know, because uh, Morphonia, she just wants to live on a planet that's a lot warmer and do things that she wants to do as opposed to just being like, um, you know, restricted to living on this planet and, you know, occasionally filling in for Rita. You know, it was interesting to see that and to know that her parents were, in fact, actual um I guess uh, prisoners and she was born in a cell uh, very unfortunate man but it was nice to see that Rita was looking out for her. you know her or them and um, Kagaragi have a lot in common where they mask their true feelings and emotions what they really want Kagaragi he's a person that lies to himself and sometimes he's conflicted on what he truly wants to do you know on one hand he'll say that he wants his sister to be over there uh, in Tofu but on another hand he truly does want her to find a husband you know and we know that she wants to be with Rackless and I love how we kind of got a little smidget of that where we see that the feelings are mutual between her and Rackless, we see that Rackless doesn't mind jumping in front of a, a bullet to, in order to protect my girl Kazame or Sizame, Suzume, <laughs> Suzu. <laughs> uh, so that's interesting, man. Like Rita, Rita, they have feelings, you know, they, they truly appreciate everything that Morphonia was, you know, the reason why 
they act like they don't want Morphonio to take the uh, the throne of justice is because they fear that, you know, Morphonio, Morphonio might get hurt. You know, it's going to be a hard thing to bear, you know, to cast judgment on all these different villains, you know. So um, very cool episode, man. I like how also with the King's proof abilities that we see between um, Kagaragi and Rita, uh, at first, they tried to utilize those abilities alone separately, but they realized that, hey, if we do do this, it's going to have, um, you know, traverse effects or adverse effects on our ourselves. So maybe using them in tandem would help cancel out those effects, you know. So it was nice to see them do that, you know. Um, ka Damn, I, why do I always forget his name? Kagaragi basically warms up Rita when she uses her ice powers and in return her ice powers cool down Karagane or Kagaragi. <laughs> I've probably been watching too much um, Mazinger Edition ZD Impact because I keep thinking about the Karagane Shrine even though I'm trying to say um, Kagaragi. So uh, interesting names, very similar but different. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this next episode guys, which is going to be titled know the beauty of life so i have a nagging suspicion that this is going to revolve around hameno since she is a beautiful queen and you know she likes saving lives so let's see how this is going to go let's do it grody da grody lee i guess you want to be in their position too Mm. Slash all you motherfuckers. Exactly, I knew it. He wants to die. Mm. What you gonna do? Yeah, this is like a rival battle, huh? Gotta get revenge from mom and pops. Hey. King's proof, baby. All right, let's see what it consists of. You got your own scythe. That tree's coming down, huh? Oh, wow. So it actually kills life? I thought it gives life. Looks like it. Damn, that was quick. <laughs> I know, but at what cost though? What's gonna be the effects of this? Oh shit. Okay. Got a Jabba walkie over here. The fuck is that? Fruit gushels? Yeah, gotta collect them all, huh? Dead. Son of a bitch. They look like um, shoe god crystals. Yeah, man. Why did you fill this guy with fruit gushers? Great flavor at that. Rack that memory back. What, what are we talking about? Oh, shit. He's going to be back to his nefarious self again. Way too many of them. So he can't die at all, dude. <laughs> Go right ahead. Bring them back before nine o'clock. Or you're getting charged. Oh, 
Oh, really? Which were, though? Mm. So are you still alive? I mean, why wouldn't it be, though? What? Oh, shit. It's no wonder he never changes his outfits. His whole body is different. Guy has an embedded Shikong jewel. What? I mean, just because I'm half galactic insect. Oh, fuck. Right, I don't think Grody asked for this. Yeah, and. <laughs> yeah, for your own amusement. Well, I like that outfit. You don't say. Damn, boy, he done lost some soldiers, ain't he? Talked up to be. <laughs> Make me blush. I'll be there by your side, exactly. What does the scouter say? Let's cut to the chase. I don't think so, fool. Spider Samasa. Shh. 
Oh boy, I done woke him up now. Ooh! No, it's gonna get a good choreographed fight. Full of special effects in 3D. Oh! Hey, can you touch me? Nice. I mean, I don't mean we can kill you over and over, though. You know, we can do that if we want. At all. Web them up. Restrict them. Yeah, what y'all gonna do, man? It only turns me on. What do you get? What else you got for me? <laughs> oh shit, big boy back, big roly poly. Alright, he's back too. Uh the digging general over here. Mr. Can you dig it, sucker? Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, we need a closing chapter or a book in, bro. Gonna shoot it. <laughs> oh, her eyes are getting misty. Yeah, don't hold back the tears, man. But I know he ain't. Whatever. Right. Oh, it's those moments that you have to cherish. Life's too short. What? Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Me neither. Where's Thanos when you need him, bro? Very nice. You can feel it. <laughs> what you gonna do now, man? Oh god, here we go again. Why don't you just die now?
Whoa, 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 wait now. Oh boy, somebody get us a can of bug spray already. It's all out pandemonium. Alright guys, so that right there was episode 46, which is titled, Know the Beauty of Life. So yeah, man, um, it seems like this guy Grody, you know, he really uh, yearns to be put out of his misery because I don't think he can feel anything, you know, he's already dead, he's a walking corpse. But unfortunately, he's consumed so many shoe god spirits, it makes it to where it's going to take a while to kill him. Which, take that what you will, I know some characters, they enjoy having that ability where they're pretty much invulnerable at certain points. But this guy, you know, he wants to be put out of his misery. It's kind of like, um, what's that guy's name? I forget from Naruto Shippuden. The guy that's obsessed with pain. Uh, kind of like him. Uh... Yeah, I like how they continue to utilize certain story beats for two characters as opposed to one. Um, I would say that they did the same thing with Yama too when he got his uh, King's Proof ability. We saw him work in tandem with uh, my man Gitta to beat Hedda, uh, Hillabill or however you say her name. But yeah, it seems like that's going to be a reoccurring thing now where we start to see those duo type stories. So uh yeah, I'm loving it, man. I'm really, really uh, digging this. It seems like that's all of them, too, if I'm not mistaken, unless we have to, we have yet to see what Gita can truly do with his unlock potential. Um, this is a great episode. I really enjoy how they reveal that Jeremy, at first, you know, like I was thinking that Jeremy was able to sustain his life by way of being half Buckster, half Terran, but no, it's actually something else entirely. It's this crystal that's been embedded in his chest. It's almost like Naraku Shikon Jewel, if you know what I mean. You know, this power that gives these demons these uh, enhancements, such as immortality and stuff of that nature. So, it's, it's great to see them utilize that, you know, come up with the... Um, I don't know like the outcome or the re the resolution that they should use that in order to actually make um, Grody come to life for real. But unfortunately, you know, like um, I feel like it's gonna take a while for them to truly beat this guy because now that he feels these sensations and he truly feels alive, that's probably gonna rekindle his ambition and he's gonna want to do other nefarious acts. Who knows? I'm just getting tired of seeing this character. I'm tired of all the Galactic Insects at this point. Like, I just want them over and done with. But, um, yeah, um, overall, I really enjoyed these episodes. I think they are very good, and I think the writing continues to um, be creative. Because the, the, the Ogres, they have to think more. They, they, they're they constantly put in these situations where they have to outthink the Galactic Insects and come up with uh, these little ways to defeat them. Overall, if I were to rate this one, I would give it a high S+. Plus. You know, this is a little on the slower side. There's action in it, but it's not action to where it's like peak and you have to notice what's going on and stuff. It's action to where we're trying to kill off, you know, as many of these, um, you know, these bugs, these bugs as we can, you know, because they're undead already. But anyways, that's going to do it for us today. I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction because as always, I have a blast reacting to these things with you and for you. If there's anything that I may have missed or got misconstrued, by all means, provide the proper context in the comment section below without spoiling me on things to come. Please do not do it. We are just a handful of episodes away from seeing how this thing is going to end. So you guys have been doing good so far. Don't mess it up now. But once again, this is your boy RBG, aka The Random Black Gamer. We ain't seen it reactions. I'll catch you guys on the next reaction to Osama Sentai King Oger. Peace.